Hello, beautiful, smiling English learners. Today you will learn how Hong Kong began, the beginning of Hong Kong. And you'll learn about the opium wars between Britain and China, all in a pre-intermediate English. We will learn over 20 new words today, including opium, addicted, territory, humiliated, treaty, block, illegal, which we'll review at the end. This is the first part of a three-part series which will teach us the whole story of Hong Kong from 1839 to the situation today and improve your English at the same time. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you do not miss these episodes every two weeks. Here, I speak about exciting topics in simple English. Remember, the quickest way to learn is to listen to as much English as possible that is one level above your level. This way, you pick up and learn maximum amounts of new language. To fully understand what's happening today in Hong Kong, we must first go back in time. Before it was British, Hong Kong used to be a part of China. But then there was a bloody war between Britain and China. This was called the First Opium War. Why did this war start? It started because China tried to stop opium coming into the country from the British. China said, no, we don't want your opium. Opium is a drug. It is made from poppies, which are a kind of flower. Another name for this drug is heroin. People usually smoke it with special pipes. Sometimes they are beautifully crafted pipes. Opium, and you see them in museums often, opium became a big problem in China. By 1838, 4 to 12 million Chinese had become addicted to opium. Addicted is an adjective for someone who needs something again and again every day and they cannot stop. Addicted. Some people are addicted to gambling, video games or drinking. They must do it every day. They can't stop doing it. But the Chinese had a nationwide addiction to opium. This addiction damaged, meaning it hurt Chinese society. It damaged the Chinese economy and their lifestyle. China wanted to be free of this addiction. Where? Where were they buying all of this opium? From British merchants. Illegally. Illegal is an adjective meaning against the law, prohibited, not allowed. British merchants were making big money by illegally selling opium to the Chinese population of hundreds of millions of people. In 1839, the emperor of China asked his military general, Imperial Commissioner Lin, to stop the opium trade in China. First, Imperial Commissioner Lin, he asked foreign companies, can you trade tea instead of opium? You know, the, the drink tea? They said, no, that failed. Then he wrote an open letter to the Queen of England, to Queen Victoria, saying how opium was destroying Chinese society. And she never read the letter the letter was lost. After that, he decided to use force. He tried to block, tried to stop by force 
all foreign ships from entering the Pearl River. He blocked the foreign ships, boats, trading boats, from entering using a blockade of Chinese Navy ships. He discouraged, he tried to stop Chinese from trading with British merchants. And he destroyed, destroyed 20,000 chests, about 1,000 tons of British opium. It was so much it took 23 days to destroy. The British did not like that it had become so difficult to trade with China. So they sent 40 warships and 20,000 soldiers to war to open up China to trading by force, to secure the trading of opium and other goods, and to make China compensate, to make them pay for the opium that Imperial Commissioner Lin had destroyed. Also, the British could only trade at one shipping port at Canton, and that was not enough for them. They wanted more shipping ports. They wanted to trade with many more ports in China. The war lasted for nearly three years and ended with about 4,000 deaths and British victory. Uh, because Britain won the war, they could decide what happens next. That's what happens in war. After the war, Britain and China signed a treaty. A treaty is the noun for a written agreement between two countries. This treaty made China give Hong Kong Island to Britain. It let, it allowed Britain to open up four new shipping ports, including Shanghai, which was the beginning of Shanghai becoming an international business hub and Guangzhou. Also, the treaty said British citizens could not go to Chinese prisons if they break the law. Also, the treaty, the agreement, forced China to pay $3 million for the opium that was destroyed by Imperial Commissioner Lin. After this war, opium could be traded much more freely in China. The British government said this war was to protect, to defend British citizens and their rights abroad, and to stop them going into Chinese prisons, Chinese jails. They said it was to protect national honor, national pride. I read that the British didn't like kneeling and bowing in front of the Chinese emperor because it made them feel unequal. They also said the Chinese people want to trade with us, but their government is stopping them. We must help them. They said many things, many things, but it seems that the truth the real reason for the war was to protect business interests, to protect the opium trade, especially, and to continue making millions from Chinese opium addicts. In the London newspapers, in the free press, journalists, writers named the war the Opium War, and many British people were disgusted, horrified, ashamed of their government, that their government was fighting a war to help drug traffickers, to help drug dealers against a country, China, that had always been friendly to Britain. Some British politicians tried to stop the war by trying to make the politicians that started it resign and quit their positions. 
the future UK Prime Minister, William Gladstone, wrote in his diary, I am in fear of the judgments of God upon England for our national iniquity, meaning unfair treatment towards China. A war more unjust in its origin to cover this country with permanent disgrace. In 1846, there was a second opium war, which was four years long. France and the USA joined the UK with 20,000 soldiers. They defeated 200,000 Chinese soldiers because they had superior technology and superior gun power. One event that happened is they took the Chinese capital city, Beijing, and they destroyed and burned the Chinese emperor's summer palace in revenge for the killing of 20 Westerners. At the end of this war, China again had to give away more territories. Territory, a noun meaning a big piece of land. They gave away more territories to the British. China had to open up 10 more shipping ports for foreign trade and signed more treaties and trade agreements that were usually not fair, not equal. Opium became legalized, so it was no longer prohibited, no longer against the law, and opium could now be traded easily all over China. Also, before this war, foreign merchants could only trade on the Chinese coasts in the coastal cities in China. But after the war, foreign merchants could move inland and trade with all of China. Before this war, foreign people could only travel and stay in coastal cities. After this war, foreign people could now travel across all of China. Now, Britain, France, Russia, and the USA could put embassies in Beijing, the capital, which was a closed city before. But now, they've got, they can have foreign embassies in it. To summarize, China was a closed country before. And after the Second Opium War, it was forced open. China felt like they had lost control of their own country. They felt humiliated. Humiliated is an adjective which means ashamed, embarrassed, taken advantage of. And the Chinese call this period of history the century of humiliation. A century is a hundred years. The century of humiliation. The century of humiliation was not just because of the British and French taking territories from China. During this century, China also fought wars with Japan, Russia, and Germany, and they lost nearly all of these wars. Lost them. China had to give away more territories, sign unfair treaties, pay reparations, which means to pay money for war damages. The side that loses pays the most money. They had to forcibly open up more shipping ports for trade. China was powerless and could not stop this outside influence and colonialism. They could not stop it. If you are watching the video, here are some cartoons from the press at that time. It was after 
the Second Opium War, two more territories, territories meaning big pieces of land, two more territories were added to British Hong Kong Island, the Kowloon Peninsula and the New Territories. So now, the land mass, the land area of modern-day Hong Kong was complete. The UK and China signed a new treaty in 1898. They agreed that these three territories, Hong Kong Island, the Kowloon Peninsula, and the New Territories, these three territories would stay British for 99 years. They would stay British until 1997. And this was the beginning of modern day Hong Kong. What happened next? Well, you'll have to watch next episode as we go into the next part of the history of Hong Kong. Okay, vocabulary review. The words are opium, treaty, addict, humiliated, illegal, and territory. Okay, what is the noun for a written and signed agreement between two countries? A treaty, treaty, treaty. Example, the Treaty of Nanjing was signed by China and the UK in 1842. Next, what is the noun for the drug which is made from poppy flowers? Opium, opium, opium. What is the adjective for a person who cannot stop doing something, such as drinking, video games, gambling? Addicted, addicted, addicted. Example, my friend is addicted to online poker. And someone who is addicted, you can call an addict, the noun. For someone who is addicted, you say an addict. My friend is an online poker addict. And the noun for the habit, for the action, the noun is addiction. My friend has an online poker addiction. Next, what is the adjective for when something is against the law, lawfully prohibited, lawfully not allowed? Illegal, illegal, illegal. The opposite is legal, legal, without the I. So illegal, the opposite is legal. Examples, marijuana was illegal in Canada, but then in 2018, it became legal. You can also use the verb legalize if something was illegal and then becomes legal. For example, marijuana in Canada was legalized in 2018. Casino gambling was legalized in Las Vegas in 1931. Next, what is the adjective for the feeling of being ashamed, embarrassed, taken advantage of, like everyone is laughing at you? Humiliated, humiliated, humiliated. Example, my friend watched my YouTube channel and laughed at me. I felt humiliated. Uh, <laughs> A noun for a big piece of land, a territory, territory, territory. Example, Britain was given two more territories in 1860 to make what is now modern day Hong Kong. Okay, please interact with the channel. Subscribe, like, comment, because it helps the channel grow and it helps me. And remember, you can listen to all episodes as podcasts for free. The Simple English Listening Podcast 
is available on all major podcast apps, such as Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts. I recommend you watch the YouTube video once or twice for the subtitles, pictures, and word definitions, and then listen to the podcast a few times, or just listen to the video to pick up the most language and to maximize your learning. That's all for today. See you in about two weeks for another show.